so myself, Ashish Patnak, Strategic Partnership Manager from Continental Automotive, based out of Frankfurt, Germany. And together with my colleague, Thomas, uh, Cloud Solution Architect, uh, Continental, also based out of Germany, we would um, provide uh, insights into how Continental is accelerating automotive software development with virtual environments. Uh, so we have a framework called Continental Automotive Edge, or Catch framework, and the product VC Creator, which we would also provide insights later in this presentation. So yeah, we would go through the agenda. Uh, so basically, today we would talk about uh, okay, what exactly is uh, uh, what do we mean by software defined vehicle here? And one second, I need to. Yeah, sorry, yeah, and how Continental is uh, is developing uh, the framework, or which is already developer framework for Continental Automotive Edge framework. And then uh, Thomas Kendall would dive deep into the virtualization aspects of it. Moving on, Thomas. Okay, uh, so what is our definition? What do we mean by software defined vehicle? I assume it's an automotive and manufacturing uh, webinar. Uh, all of you uh, are or should be well aware of SDV, a software defined vehicle. So here it is about decoupling software from hardware that enables swift and continuous development and implementation of new functions and software updates. Uh, so the crux of the matter is, uh, you know, how can are we able to achieve this? How can we decouple hardware and software to get all the benefits that comes out of it? Um, so the, be it, uh, you know, shift left approach, faster time to market, cost savings, and so on. Uh, so this is why we speak of uh, software defined vehicles. So you can see the focus is uh, no longer only on hardware, but moving more and more towards the software. So Continental uh, over, has its legacy of since 150 years to be a hardware driven company. But with the change in the automotive market, we are also shifting our strategy, shifting our focus to a more software driven approach to, And uh, we would showcase how how we are also pioneers in the software domain of, uh, of the automotive industry. Moving on. So uh, to achieve this, uh, so we have, Continental has developed a so-called road to cloud ecosystem. So here you could see um, how from, uh, from the bottom left, so server zone architecture, goes towards uh, the connectivity, so road to the cloud, and from cloud to road using virtualization integration to over the air updates. So here, uh, basically, this um, we have developed this uh, this ecosystem to provide um, so there are hardware enablers like the software HPCs, zone controllers through the server zone architecture. Then there are the software um, enablers like OS, operating system, middleware, software solutions, ideally um, applications on top decoupled from hardware. And then the integration part, so from CI, CD testing, data security, lifecycle management. As you can see, before the integration, there is this virtualization and digital twin, uh, which is basically how we can make use of um, uh, like before we do all this system integration, how we can bring virtualization into the game to uh, to do the testing before the hardware is available, which basically Thomas would also showcase in his uh, in his slides. Moving on. Uh, so we have developed this uh, Continental Automotive Edge framework. So this is a cloud-based framework for uh, for soft, so decoupling of software uh, and hardware, for virtualization and simulation, seamless collaboration, um, and validation. Uh, so this is basically the, the framework in which uh, this our SDV is built on. Also important thing to highlight here is AWS uh, provides a basic infrastructure, or this whole cache framework is built on AWS itself. Uh, moving on. What can we do with Catch? So with Catch, you have uh, there are four four different uh, use cases. First is evaluate your software architecture before you build your physical device. So virtualization aspect. Then you can run a new function within a day in any physical device, and you can share your device uh, across all the developers worldwide instantly. 
and finally you are able to drive a 1 million kilometer of simulation all while sitting at your desk so these are the four uh, four benefits for use cases that for the overall continental automotive edge framework that we we foresee uh, next slide yeah so uh, two uh, two or three slides back i explained about the road to cloud ecosystem and then uh, how cage has four different uh, different use cases and in this slide i will try to map uh, the road to cloud ecosystem with cage so starting with the evaluate part Thomas, you can click once. So you can see evaluate a software architecture before building physical devices. So obviously virtualization is involved here. Server zone architecture, decoupling uh, software hardware, OS middleware, coming to the run part. Uh, here you could see software solutions. Um, again, middleware, uh, CI, CD testing, over the air updates and in the share saving the same target for all the developers so here connectivity comes into the play ot ota life cycle management and finally the simulation the drive it is deals with cicd testing and application on top so basically the software solutions um, so yeah this basically gives an overview of uh, of our whole whole ecosystem road to cloud ecosystem and how we are mapping it with our framework of catch moving on so this is a, a, a different view of, of this framework. So basically a data-driven approach uh, of continental automotive edge framework. Here you could see how, how the, the flow is from real world to virtual world. It's a cyclic approach. We we'll start with the updating of software, then dr driving the vehicle, collecting the data in the real world, uh, analyzing and uploading the data, moving towards training the, the data, model training in, in the virtual world, uh, simulating or so testing the optimized algorithm, and finally validating or testing the data in a uh, in a in a targeted in a software uh, sorry in a ECU similar to a target. So this is how how we see a catch framework, a cyclic approach. Moving on. Okay, so we have uh, so I have highlighted. Okay, what exactly do we mean by SDV and how? Continental has developed this Continental Automotive Edge framework, and now Thomas Kendall would uh, present go dive deep into the virtualization aspect of it. Before that, I would like to also highlight one thing for the virtualization part. We uh, we do have a strategic partnership with AWS, so we are collaborating on developing this uh, virtualization aspect or virtual ECU creator together with AWS as well. So over to you, Thomas. Yeah, thanks, Ashish. So let's actually dive into um, the virtualization part. Um, and here, um, before we do anything technical, let's look at a bit, why do we actually need uh, virtualization? I mean, it's one of the cornerstones of our road to map um, uh, framework, basically. Um, but what is actually the issue? What do you want to solve? And for this, let's actually look at a typical um, classical um, hardware a project where you want to deliver, for example, a car to the road. And in this case, if you look at the typical flow, you can see it here on the bottom, you start at hardware specification, um, hardware development, and so on. And once that is done, you may be, you do A samples, B samples, C samples, and then you ramp up really to get to the SOP and serious production. This is, of course, a very long process that uh, can span uh, multiple years. And um, how does now the software part of this look like? Well, first of all, you can only get more or less started, really, when the hardware development uh, is done. Um, and this means very late in the project, you can start developing your features. You can see here basically two views. One is the feature content, and one is the open software bugs or issues. And yeah, you start basically on the A sample, you start developing, your feature content rises slowly. Of course, you also rise with your bugs rise and you at some point reach a peak and okay, then actually you, you start fixing more bugs than you introduce and it settles a bit. But then you introduce the B samples, which of course have some uh, improvements inside. So they're also a bit different. And once the software starts rolling out on these B samples, you find, okay, there are actually new uh, um, new issues in the system and you add new features and you have even more uh, bugs or issues in your system. 
Uh, and the SOP is now getting closer and closer, but of course you have another loop with typical C samples, which are now much getting closer and closer to the serious production. Um, so you introduce your um, software again on these samples and you find even new issues, also because the new latest features also come into play until finally you can see the light at the end of the tunnel basically. And your features, uh, your, your features are more or less reached uh, completion and yet the number of bugs is also slowly decreasing. But then there's the SOP and you might find, okay, uh, there are still open issues. Um, we need a task force and there's a lot of escalation going on until in the serious production you fixed uh, all most critical issues. And all in all, this in the end leads to a yeah, low customer satisfaction, uh, even um, to the end customers of the different OEMs. Um, this is the situation in the classical um, world where you just have a physical hardware. And now the promise of the virtualization of the virtualized hardware is to basically shift this all left, the shift left here basically. And this means now, the idea here is now that you have a virtualized hardware or a digital twin um, that is quite close to your physical system. And due to that, you can already start decoupling basically your software development from uh, your hardware de development and you can start much earlier on. This is enabled by the VSU Creator. This is basically a product from, from Continental uh, developed in collaboration with AWS and hosted on AWS uh, and it allows you to just basically spin up a digital twin. Before we go into detail what that actually is, what uh, what is our, um, what is it that we want from it? Uh, first of all, of course, it's a shift left. So you could say, okay, it's just the whole curve that is shifted to the left, but there are other benefits besides just um, the cost saving. You probably need uh, less samples overall because you can already start testing early on on your digital twins. And even um, inside the sample, um, uh, different sample uh, runs, um, you can, in parallel, also test on a virtual uh, or digital twins, allowing you to basically to reduce the number of hardware that is actually needed. Um, and this also smoothens in overall out uh, the whole process a bit because you can actually, before you introduce a change in the physical hardware, you can test already that change in your, in your digital twin basically, uh, which means that uh, you can actually bring software early on to the new uh, target hardware. And all in all, this should basically uh, move the whole curve to the left and smoothen and flatten it a bit, make it lower. Um, and there's one ad in addition. Now you might think, okay, there should still be, still be the tail in the end. Uh, but here really the advantage is also that you can scale. So if you look at a typical automotive project, it has hundreds, maybe even thousands of developers um, just for a single single vehicle type. And the, now with the virtualization and with AWS, we get scaled, scalability into the plate. So you can spin up many um, yeah, machines in parallel. You can even on every pull request of a developer uh, run now tests on a virtual hardware. And this overall should really give you cost saving, time saving, and in the end, even more time to bring in more features. Uh, leading to, in the end, a higher customer satisfaction. This is um, the target that we basically aim for this virtualization. And now let's get a bit more concrete. How does it actually look like? Um, here, uh, let's look at the workflow that we would have in, uh, in the system design, for example. You start, of course, with the car configuration. Um, think how, do, which uh, requirements do we have here? Which partitions do we want? Um, then you might come up with, for example, three partitions, classic AutoSaw, adaptive AutoSaw, and Android, uh, based on that basically you want to develop towards. And based on this, you can then design your virtual ECU. And here, um, our advantages is already that we have a quite broad um, virtual HPC or virtual ECU um, that we have experience with and that we can support. 
um, just one word towards HPC. Of course, here we are in the automotive world. So by speaking about an HPC, a high performance computer, we don't speak about a huge server rack in the cloud, but something that is high performant compared to, compared to classical embedded devices in the car. And now the goal is to have a virtual a digital twin of this HPC. And this is basically what our VECO creator offers. And here we can look at the different partitions that we already um, have uh, today in our virtual uh, HPC in different projects, basically. Uh, it starts from the backbone of, uh, of automotive, which is classical Autosa. Um, you can spin up here uh, in our VSEO creator classical Autosa instances, but all the modern adaptive Autosa. Uh, there's also support for um, 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 quasi real-time or real-time uh, with QNX. And um, also other things like uh, Android and Linux, which are getting more and more uh, relevant in mo modern uh, yeah, car development. Um, and that's one part. So you have, let's say, these five partitions. But of course, it's not just about having these partitions. You actually also want to connect them. And here we also offer inside our virtual HPC solution a virtual uh, networking so that uh, you, these can talk to each other. Um, in our projects, we also have um, car bus simulations so that you can uh, also actually um, use uh, CAN signals and test these in your classical Autosa uh, world. Um, and there are quite a few other aspects. Maybe one more thing to highlight here is um, if you take a typical Android, it's quite often that this is also the part that has um, the display in front uh, besides your driver wheel or even behind your driver wheel. Uh, and here you also, of course, need other things like peripherals like uh, an audio out or audio in, you also need video out and everything. And also this is basically included in our uh, VSTO creator already. Um, so you can see it's, you can simulate isolated partitions, but also the whole virtual HPC uh, in one uh, piece with the uh, partitions uh, integrated with each other. And then, um, yeah, offer interfaces to the outside world. Um, of course, all of this uh, runs on IWS um, um, EC2 in the end. I will show a bit more on that uh, uh, later on. And this is the core of our VSU creator. Um, the nice thing is that we are integrated in a, a collaboration framework, framework here. So you can have the virtual ECU creator standalone, or what we also have already to use is basically a collaboration framework where you have your full um, development um, yeah, lifecycle integrated, offering things like GitHub, Artifactory, Jenkins for your pipelines or Jira. This could in principle also be added as part of our catch framework. Um, okay, this is now a bit of a generic expixer. How can it look uh, in, um, yeah, concretely? Here we can go to, uh, to the US, to Las Vegas. Uh, where we were in uh, in January at the CES. And at the CES 24, 24 we basically um, did a demonstration project where we took um, this uh, ID bus from uh, VW and we placed our own um, device inside. It's called the Smart Cockpit device. Um, and it's one variant of an HPC. And now, of course, um, there was the part where we did the car, car configuration. Then you thought about how does your system actually look like? In this case, they had basically an Android, a Linux, and a classical Autosa system. And then we basically, or, or they were able to, together with us, to configure a virtual HPC that actually fits to their needs. So it's not just that you have this generic VHPC and it's one for all, but you can actually tailor it to a specific project. Um, yeah. And in this case, you then add basically these three partitions. Um, and yeah, more or less what I said before, you can then uh, simulate the peripherals, especially for Android. This was uh, helped them quite a lot to uh, validate the system. And um, it's also yeah more or less working out of the box. So it's not just that you spin up an EC2 instance, but we actually offer um, a user interface to do all of this. Um, but um, this is now how it looks like in a concrete project. Um, I think now I need to do a sort intermezzo and say one word basically uh, in the level of uh, virtualization, a whole car, uh, where are we here? 
and you can start basically at um, at just a, a single a function that you want to simulate on a single chip. Um, and here you have uh, basic software functions. And for this, uh, what you can use our VSU creator um, and Synopsys Virtualizer to do this basically. Um, more interesting, I think it gets when you have a, a full single ECU. Here, for example, for classic AutoSaw, we offer a Synopsys Silver-based um, simulation uh, as part of our virtual HPC. But the really interesting part is when it comes to um, a set of ECUs, you have different ECUs of different types, classic autos or Android um, or QNX, for example, more Linux systems. And this is, I think, where um, Catch really, really shines because you have this um, virtual HPC that you saw before with all um, yeah, partitions interconnected and also even peripherals to the outside simulated. Of course, you can also simulate isolated ECUs. Um, that's also possible, and also um, just individual functions. So it's not that you need different solutions here. Of course, there's also the full call to simulate the full car, simulate maybe that it's driving on a certain track. Um, that's a plan for the future. Um, so this is really uh, targeting the simulation of the ECU systems. OK. Um, now coming back to um, our uh, digital twin, um, let's look maybe a bit closer on how um, this a typical software flow would look like, like here. Um, looking at the time, I think um, I do this a bit quicker. Um, let's say we start uh, at a developer. He wants to do a software update. And in a classical world, he would have just gone in his build stage and built it for the physical hardware. And um, then, yeah do it there, run the integration and partition tests, and then release basically the hardware. Um, now with our digital twin, you can actually more or less use the same uh, continuous integration uh, build to then test uh, the artifacts on your digital twin, and then run your partition and partition integration tests uh, on this uh, digital twin. And of course, you can do post in parallel, but you can also think now, if you have uh, lower level um, changes in your system, you can start uh, speeding up your whole process um, by just following the upper approach and using the lower approach when it then comes to the higher level integration. And even if you have uh, cases where you do not have the hardware yet, you can just uh, start already developing with the upper flow here. And finally, when you have such a digital twin, you cannot just test it to test, test a single change. You can release it also so that others testers or system testers can use it. Uh, and based on our um, yeah, VSU creator, uh, then um, run uh, even more extended tests. OK, but that's as deep as I want to dive into the uh, our VHPC architecture. Let's also look a bit at uh, how this looks like in the AWS. And here we really benefited a lot uh, because AWS is really very, yeah, it's super mature, it's super scalable. And you can see here more or less the core of our um, uh, VECO creator. It's not super complex, but it's, it scales very well. Uh, on the one side, you basically have your, um, uh, your user, it can be a developer, integrator, or tester. And here we basically offer a user interface where user can just create a VECO. Um, of course, in the long run, you want to actually automate on all of these manual steps. So another type of usage is by a continuous testing gateline, a gate pipeline. And here via basically a REST API, you can then talk to our backend. You can create so-called uh, releases. These are basically um, where you say, how does your architecture of your VHPC look like? And then you can also go the upper flow and manage a, a VSU and create one. And this, in the end, here creates basically instance of your VSU, which contains different EC2 instances that make up your VHPC. And of course, there will be many of this because you have different pull requests or different testers who spin up different instances. So then you have multiple stacks of different EC2 instances. 
And then, um, of course, uh, the user developer integrator needs to access this. And here, I think AWS also really helped because it's very easy to set up access to these partitions by using AWS SSM. And then you can just establish a connection between the uh, developer's uh, machine, for example, or you can turn this test pipeline, and then you are free to basically execute any test framework that you need. Okay, and uh, the biggest complexity, I think, is in here. You somehow need a basis for these images, and here we actually benefit a lot from the experience this, that we have at Continental to provide a good uh, pipelines to generate the base images which are used to actually run these EC2 instances and also to have a wide variety, as you saw before, from classic AutoSAR to adaptive, QNX, Android, and Linux. Um, yeah, and this is basically the solution architecture that we have. Now to wrap it up, um, the targets or achievements that we want here is really the risk uh, reduction uh, by decoupling the software architecture uh, from, from or the software development from your hardware development. You have resource saving, cost saving, and um, you need, no longer need so many uh, hill tests um, and can instead use uh, tests running on your virtual, uh, yeah, on your virtual HPCs. And as a result, you basically then have a much earlier and smoother introduction in the serious production, a faster SOP. You no longer need escalations and so on. And even later on, then into in when the car is on the road, you can continue to use it uh, and validate um, over the air updates before you roll them out on your car itself. So overall, leading to a higher customer satisfaction. That's the whole goal again. And that's it from my side. Um, um, thanks to you all. Hey, thanks, uh, Thomas and. Uh... Anir Ashish, uh, so I think we have just one question. Uh, can you give more info on the drive part one million kilometer simulation in one day? If you can quickly answer that. I think it was in one of the beginning slides. Yes, yeah, let me just One million touch up. kilometer simulation in one day. Yeah, let me just touch upon that uh, and feel free to add anything if Thomas, you would like to. Um, yeah, so it's basically a, a cloud-based tool chain with, uh, with data logistics, ingest, supporting for simulation, doing model training. Uh, we do have also a project or, or completed a project also with a Japanese OEM related to this cage drive part. Uh, so basically doing this, um, so uh, collecting the data, doing the model training and simulating those, yeah. I'm not sure if Thomas you would like to add anything. I think you answered quite well. Okay, thanks. All right, great. Thank you both again. Uh, this was another amazing presentation.